Hi everyone and welcome to the book refuge and welcome to my first uh well it's the first one I'm filming you maybe have seen another one already but this is the first of my series about like books I want to read in 2020 um I really want to focus on reading books that I own I'm not going on a book buying van or cutting myself off or anything as dramatic as that but I just want to try to get through more things that I own. And so this one is about, um, I have 10 classics that I own that I wanna read next year. So as you know, or will know, pre-filming videos is weird. I didn't do so well with reading my classics in 2019. I only ended up reading about five. And it was a good experience, I'm glad I did, but I wanna make it more of a priority to get through these 10. And so I have 10 that I am pretty excited for all of them. They're either authors I already like or books that I've been wanting to read and just keep putting off and I'm gonna to try to get through them this year. And in my um, TBR challenge game that I have, I have a couple squares for classics and so I'm hoping that I get to those. So. Let's go ahead and dive in and I'll start with the one that I really meant to read this year because I wanted to reread it so badly and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. So although I have not a good relationship with Emily Bronte, Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre is in my top five favorite books and this is my, well now it's my second favorite classic because North and South edged it out this last year. But I also didn't reread this one this year so maybe I would change if I did. This is about Jane Eyre, who, in case you don't know, becomes a governess for Mr. Rochester and his ward, Adele, who he's taking care of for reasons. And there's some crazy mysteries happening at Thornfield Hall. So I'm excited to reread this. I have this beautiful copy that I ordered from Book Outlet. These are the Paper Mill Press um, classics, and it's gorgeous. Another three rereads that I'm wanting to do is I want to reread Hatchet, which may or may not be considered a classic. I consider it one. It's 30 years old. It is a staple in a lot of young readers' lives. And so I'm counting it as a classic. I don't care if it's official or not. This is Hatchet by Gary Paulson. This is a really short book. This is about Brian, who is on his way to visit his father in Canada for... Um, for like I think summer vacation and the pilot has a heart attack and dies and he crashes in the Canadian wilderness alone. I believe he's like 13 or 14 when this happens. He has very little idea of how to survive and all he has is the hatchet that he's been given as a gift. It's so good. It's what started my love of like you know, survivalist books. I think it did for a lot of us, and I want to reread it this year. And I have this beautiful leather bound copy that I got for the 30th anniversary release. It has beautiful um, sketches and pictures inside, and I'm really excited to reread this. Also, one of the paper mill classics I got, I want to reread The Call of the Wild by Jack London. I think Murphy wants to read this as well, so we'll probably be reading this soon. This is a really good wintry book. It's also pretty quick. It's under 100 pages. This is about, um, I think it's Buck is the dog. Yeah, it's Buck and his owner, and it's awesome. I remember it as a kid, though, and I really want to reread it. And I bought this beautiful copy of it to do that. So hopefully we'll get to that one soon. Because that's a wintry book. So it'd be fun to read that one now. Now for a book that was I loved when I was young. And I haven't read this in a long, long time. And I'm really excited to reread it. So this is called Pearl Maiden by H. Ryder Haggard. And I doubt you've ever heard of it. So this is a Christian classic. Um, H. Hagar, H. Ryder Hagar also wrote King Solomon's Mind. So this is about Miriam, who's a young Christian living in the Roman Empire, and she meets Marcus, who's a Roman officer, and they fall in love. But Miriam can't marry him because he's not a Christian. And so she promised her mother when her mother died that she wouldn't marry anyone who wasn't a Christian. And as well as it being her faith and her beliefs, beliefs <laughs> she doesn't want to do it either um but it is during a very dangerous time it is during a persecution it's not many years yeah so it's it's around 70 80 so it's not too many years after christ and christians are being persecuted pretty fiercely at this time um and 
it's about her journey and it's about being in love with someone she can't have and the strength that it takes to say no when this person could offer her a wonderful life and that her convictions and her faith are stronger than that. And she goes through some crazy things in this book. She goes through slavery and indentured servitude, which is almost the same thing, and persecution. And it is such a good story. I'm like choking up remembering it. Um, me and my friend Sarah read this about the same time when we were maybe in ninth or tenth grade. We might have been younger. And I remember being very hard to read, but I loved it. I think it'll be easier to read now. And I hope that it stands up because I love this book and I wanted to reread it and so it's on my classics list for this. Okay, now all books that I'm a little bit ashamed I haven't read. So the first two that I have are Jane Austen. So Sense and Sensibility, this is about Eleanor and Marianne and their father was in his second marriage with their mother and so when their father dies all of his money goes to his oldest son who is from his previous marriage and that son basically through him and his wife take all the money from the girls and their mother that was like meant for them and it's a really great story about mis like there's miscommunications in this book there's some wonderful love stories in this book and it's one of my favorite films and i really 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 want to read the book and read more Jane Austen because I've only ever finished Pride and Prejudice and that's ridiculous. So I want to read this one and then I also want to read Mansfield Park which is also a fantastic movie um, and this one is about Fanny who goes to stay with her cousins because her family has like 18 children and they're poor and so she goes to stay with her wealthy aunt and uncle and she's kind of in love with her cousin not kind of totally in love with her cousin the whole time and there are things going on. This one's a pretty dark uh, film anyway, and I'm very interested to see how the book follows it. And I just wanna give it a try. Again, wanna read Jane Austen. Next, I have The Count of Monte Cristo by Andre Dumas, and I'm kind of ashamed I haven't read this, but also not. So if you don't know this, which you might not, it's been a long time since I've talked about it. My favorite film is The Count of Monte Cristo. I love it. It's from 2002. Um, it stars Guy Pierce as um, Fernand Mondego and James Caviezel. Sorry, his name just whoo out of my head. And it is my favorite film ever. And I know that the book is quite different and I'm scared about that. But my friend Murphy read the book and she loved it. However, the reasons that she loved it are a lot of reasons probably why I won't love it. So I'm a little bit torn, but I want to give it a try at some point. I also have a big, beautiful copy of this, but we'll see. Next, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Again, ashamed I haven't read this. We didn't have to read this in school, so I didn't. But it has been like, it's the next great American read. It's in like the top five books of all time. I feel like I should read this. I also have only seen the film once and I was young. So I know the general outline of this story like I do with most classics, but I don't know the details in it. I've heard it has a lot of great things to think about and I want to give it a go. Next, I have And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I, again, know what this one is about and I have, it's a pretty short book know how this one ends and everything but I just want to experience the book I've seen a few different versions of it and like film and stuff and I just want to get to it and again it's one that I own and it's a classic that I want to read and then finally the last one I want to get through is The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton this has been called the first YA novel this has been called like a lot of cool things this is the 50th anniversary edition this is one of Murphy's favorite books and it's just time to read it. This one's under 200 pages. See, a lot of these are short. I just need to get through these. So, yeah. Those are the 10 classics I want to try to read in 2020. Tell me which ones you've read, what you think about them, which ones you think I'll like. And I make new videos every Monday and Thursday. So please check those out when you have the time. Have a great day. Bye.